Ladies and gentlemen, the long anticipated new Volkswagen Transporter T7. It's a, it's a Ford? No, no, it's a T7. It's a Volkswagen Transporter T7. It's got a Ford badge. Right, okay, you got me. But apart from the Ford badge, it's a T7. Okay, so lots of images have been floating around about this on social media. So it's quite common knowledge now that Volkswagen have collaborated with Ford on the new Transporter. Now the new Transporter T7 isn't going to be available till the end of next year, but we've managed to get our hands on the new Transit Custom now. So why have we got our hands on the Transit Custom? Because it gives us the head start in developing for the new Volkswagen Transporter. A couple of days ago, Volkswagen released their kind of teaser video. And up until that point, we knew they were collaborating, but we didn't know how close they were going to be. The little teaser video came out and it became obvious when looking at it that it was quite similar in a lot of ways. Now, a lot of people say that's a negative thing. I'm still on the fence, but I actually think I'm edging towards it's actually a positive thing. From a development point of view, we get the head start on it. But actually now having owned one of these, so we bought this a few weeks ago and I've had the privilege. I've been able to drive it, put it that way. What I can tell you is this T, this nearly said T7 then, this Ford Transit Custom drives better than an untouched T6.1. Yes, yeah, so if you're not buying a Volkswagen Transporter, what are you gonna buy? A Transit Custom. If you're buying neither of those, then you're buying one of the Stellantis platforms. So the Citroen, Renault, Fiat, they all use exactly the same platform. I believe there's like 15 manufacturers across the world that share that Stellantis platform. Whereas here we've got two and I believe they're the best two. So let's just show you this in a bit more detail and show you where we think we see similarities in the two vehicles. So firstly, and the thing that's most obvious to me that makes this looks like a Transit Custom more than anything is this rear quarter. So if you go back through history, if you look at the, all the transporters from the split screen, right the way through to the T6.1, this window section here is straight. They can complete a straight line. Whereas on this, this section here screams Transit Custom to me. That rear window there, is what makes it look more like a Transit Custom than everything. A couple of days ago when VW released the images, I kind of stood here looking at the pictures on my phone and trying to compare it to this to see how similar it was. And it's obvious from the pictures that it's very similar. Internally, they seem to make quite a few what I would consider upgrades from what I feel like the Ford is lacking and the VW will make up for in their kind of quality. Now, it appears that this section here will be exactly the same. There looks like there's a difference in the doors. The Ford has this kind of cutout here, whereas I believe from the images we can see, the VW will come straight down. I think they share the same wind mirrors. And again, I don't think that's a bad thing. The, the visibility in this vehicle is really good for having the blind spot mirror as well. It looks like they're the same. Now, the wings will most likely change because it's clear from the front that VW have changed the bumper and the headlights. So going around the front here, Jake will put the pictures on the screen here to compare. You can see that the Transit Custom headlight is a different shape to the Ford's going to be. And whereas the Ford has this section here, which I don't dislike at all actually, I think it looks quite nice. VW have gone for more of a D shape here almost what's the word almost like a canard style look here which i think looks nicer than the ford obviously the, there's going to be no uh, ford badge the vw seems to carry straight on i would suspect there's potentially going to be a light that carries all the way along the front there like there is in the other ford models the lower section of the bumper seems different I think probably the bonnet will be different and then obviously the, the wing on this side as well. So moving down to the wheels and suspension. So as we've heard from one of the spring manufacturers that works closely with VW, I'll let you guess who that is, that they, what they've developed is different and it's developed especially for the transporter. So we know that there's going to be differences in the suspension. If you watch any Amarok and Ranger reviews, people say one of the things they really pick up on is that the Amarok drives nicer than the Ranger and they feel like the suspension's better. That kind of doesn't matter to us because we're going to sack all that suspension off and create our own. But one thing going down here, you will notice are the wheels. So this is a six hole pattern wheel from the images that VW have released. They have the same six hole pattern wheels. So the hubs and everything seems like they're going to be the same. The wishbone all looks like it's going to match up. I would think this now gives us a head start so we can start developing wheels. The little thing we're disappointed with, we believe from the measurements, you're never going to get wider than an eight inch wheel on this new platform. Whereas we would normally run a nine, you can even run up to a 10 and a half, even 11 on some wheels on the back of a transporter. But we think it's a likelihood that an eight all round is going to be the most common wheel setup for this. We're very fortunate that we now have a 3D scanning tool. So Mitch has been uh, working his way through this whole vehicle over the last few weeks scanning various areas to help us develop styling for the, the Transit Custom. That's going to be very different than the Transporter, um, but working on the suspension and importantly windows. A big part of our business is not just Transporter HQ, but it's also Camper Glass. Now the conversion companies that I've spoken to are all quite excited about this vehicle. You can't order a Transporter right now. You can't order a T6.1 and you can't order the new T7. So the conversion companies are going to be by default 
turn into the transit customers the vehicle that they're going to be converting um, for a period of time until the box van comes out. Windows are going to be important. So obviously the goal is with us, make windows that fit around, but also work on a flush sliding window. Yeah, And, th and then many other bits. We already have for these. We were very quick to have uh, mats designed for them, thermal blinds designed for them, and various other bits as we go along. Uh, we're working with several of the manufacturers using the data that we've got from our 3D scanner to help them produce things for these really quickly in the hope that a lot of those parts will be very quickly and easily swappable to the transporter platform when that arrives. So moving on to the back doors, the images that we've seen so far from VW are for tailgate, whereas this is a barn door version. They look very similar though, it's hard to tell. It does mean it gives us the head start on designing spoilers and things for both uh, versions. Here, obviously there's going to be some changes here because there's not going to be this Ford badge that's recessed in probably VW will put it somewhere else in there. So there may be some small changes, but the rear I would think will be quite different. It's highly likely the rear lights will be different. Um, hard to see from the VW images because of the kind of digital camera they've put on, but I would suspect there'll potentially be a different shape, possibly, but also the, the format and the way the lights lay out are gonna be very different. So that's the way, that's everything we can see externally that we think is different. So moving inside, one of my major concerns were after driving this is this steering wheel. Some people like it, it looks a bit different and quirky, but I don't like the position of it at all. I don't like the shape. Call me old school, but I like a round steering wheel. And the images that VW released have a standard round steering wheel. It looks very similar to the same steering wheel that comes in a T6.1. And actually, thankfully, they've done away with the haptic feedback. I like actual physical touch buttons and the VW one seems to be like that. The dash on the Transit Custom is kind of very Ford-esque in its texture. I think VW will change that. The infotainment system looks very similar. I would imagine the software that goes into them both will be completely different. I will say the infotainment system in the Ford connects way quicker and a lot better than the VW do. does in the um, T6.1 and also in the ID Buzz, it seems to be really quick and faultless in the way it connects. So hopefully there's kind of a collaboration in there. So just a few things that make this different to the, um, the T6.1, certainly. Um, electronic handbrake switch just here, which I sat at a dealer for like five minutes when I picked this up without spotting that and couldn't figure out how to pull forward. And I didn't want to go inside and ask them. So I eventually found it, but the pictures that VW released show that that same button is there. Great for the camper conversion market because you, you know, if you swivel in these seats, it was a pain to have the handbrake down here. Um, it would catch and be in the way. It looks like from the VW pictures, again, we'll show you some images. This cup holder has been removed and a nice kind of built-in sunk in area that will go here. This section all seems to be the same. The electric window switches and stuff all seem to be the same. The VW gear knob, I think, is going to be more likely seen than this quite obvious Ford gear knob. Other than that, we don't really know. We don't know about the seat finish. They certainly are going to have a different pattern to them. I like the fact that this centre seat has a, a pull-down section for storage, which some of the T6.1s do. It was an optional extra, but not on all of them. When we managed to get hold of this uh, Transit Custom, it's not a particularly high spec, but it comes with quite a lot of specs. So it comes with heated steering wheel, it comes with heated seats it comes with wireless carplay so looking at the amarok and the uh, ranger the amarok's tend to well they seem to be a little bit better spec so i'm excited to see what vw have available um, in their similar spec vehicle over what the ford would be as i said at the beginning of this video and i truly mean it having picked this up and done quite a few miles in it now i am really impressed by the way it drives i actually do believe it drives better than t6.1 and i would you would hope it to because the the reality is the t6.1 Yes, it's changed in its tech um, electrically and in its, in its engine systems, but the chassis and everything hasn't changed since 2004, since the T5 came out. It was, it really did need an upgrade. Um, and this is definitely it, in my opinion. One thing I will say is the audio in this is terrible, but that's going to be an easy fix. Speakers and stuff will, will, will come as standard with anything like this for the Transit Custom and for the Volkswagen, but it needs an upgrade. It's got that kind of tinny, rattly kind of commercial vehicle vibe from the audio. Connectivity and everything's great and the ability to use your CarPlay and that works really well and works seamlessly, as I said. All your various things you would expect now, you've got USB and USB-C port down here. You've got your 12 volt um, cigarette style charging port all here. As I said, the Ford have got this fold down cup holder and the VW one seems to be built in, but whether that changes across specs. It's got the T6.1 style cup holders up here in the dash. Can never have too many cup holders. Additional opening storage here, as well as your storage in your glove box. So all in all, it's a nice space to be. It, this one does feel very Ford-like. It does have that kind of, they just have a different texture to the plastic. It's a bit more rugged, I suppose, than I would think and possibly hope the VW version will have. So moving into the rear, 
couple of things that are noticeable. So I've had just had the tape measure out and I've been measuring the T6.1 over and then measuring this to compare. So the width of the vans at the widest point, this Transit Custom is six centimeters wider than the T6.1, also six centimeters longer than the T6.1. The height to the roof is three centimeters higher, but interestingly, wheel arch to wheel arch is actually 13 centimeters wider than a T6.1. The other great feature that this Transit Custom have, I believe the previous version had, if you need to put long pieces of metal in here or steel or whatever it is, they have this access hatch here that you pull open that allows you to carry on through there. That's magnetic to store things underneath the passenger's front seat. So other things to mention internally, I really like this hard kind of plastic protective floor with grip on it. I'm sure the VW version or the seated version will certainly have a softer, more spongier floor. Um, it's well lit in here, the LEDs. Technology of ours isn't LEDs, just get brighter and brighter, but it's really well lit. And again, I'm sure the same thing will carry through to the T7. The other thing that's quite obvious in the back here that's different to the T6.1 is the lashing points. The, all the old transporter platforms had them in the ground and they're in the sides here all the way throughout the vehicle. That will make things possibly more challenging for the likes of Avano and 40 Winks to make their systems and various other stuff, but it probably won't affect a lot of people that are turning them into campus because those will come out. They could be good places to utilise those uh, lashing points for cupboards and rock and roll beds. The rear jack is built into the corner here, whereas on the transporter it always sat over this wheel arch. It's quite ugly and obtrusive but I'm sure again we don't know if the VW one would be the same but that's a minor thing that can certainly be removed and moved somewhere else so it feels more modern and again it goes back to the transporter being the same in for many years really in the way a lot of things have changed uh, have the way a lot of things have worked on those. The T6.1 was a bit more modern in the way the doors open but everything on this seems more smoother as you'd expect the opening door the doors the sliding door opens a lot more smooth and less clunky. These doors open better than the original transporter door. Yeah. The rear doors are the same. Again, this is only the barn door version, so we can't compare the transporter version, but the same. It's, you know, it's going to just have that more modern feel to it, I think, than we, that we used to with the original transporter platform. Also worth mentioning externally, on the roof there, you'll see there's two antenna. It appears that the same will happen on the Volkswagen. You can only just about see them in the renders. You can certainly see one on the other side and possibly the other one in the background. VW did that with the T6.1 when that was released and everybody hated it and people were going around color coding it and stuff, but now it kind of just, just seems to be the norm. Where that does become a problem is with the pop tops. Uh, the manufacturers have to figure out a place to, re uh, to move those, which seems common practice now. Now this is going off to Horizon, uh, early part of the new year. They're going to develop a roof and put a roof in this one actually. We're lending it to them, so that gives them a head start. They then will be able to make the Horizon, the super low Horizon roof for the Transit Custom, which then should, if everything is as we think it would, then transfer over perfectly to the transporter as soon as they become available. So spec again, we don't really know, but this particular version comes with complete LED headlights. I would imagine that there will be a more base model, you know, with textured bumpers that doesn't come with LED lights. I think we'll find that most of the Volkswagen version will come with an LED, a standard option, but you would think there would be more of a basic kind of budget version with the texture bumpers, the kind of white panel commercial van that we're used to seeing on a day-to-day. -day. So we're already well underway with development. This has given us a massive head start on developing so many parts. So we're already working with Bilstein for coilovers. We're already working with IBAC for lowering springs and adjustable lowering springs. We are also developing a solo air suspension. This thing will most likely end up on air suspension. If everything is as we hope and expect it would be, that will then be fully transferable. So we'll be able to offer transporter, T7 air suspension, coilovers and springs the minute they land. Spoilers are already in development. Grills, we just don't think there's a point because that clearly is very different between the Transit Custom and the VW. Uh, wheels, again, we're already on that. We have custom forged Navis wheels coming for this because we believe the fitment will be exactly the same as it is the Volkswagen. As I said, slightly disappointed that we think a not an eight inch wide is gonna be as wide as we can possibly get on that. But we'll know as we test them on these to see whether we can get any away with any more as we bring them down. I mean, there has a huge arch gap, massive gap. This definitely needs addressing. So that would be one of the priorities for daily use and also for your camper van owners that just want that better ride. So th this does, as I said, it drives really well. It's noticeable that it's on a tiny skinny wheel and it's kind of all up in the air and wallowy, you know, lowering that center of gravity. And, uh, and also adding a, a slightly wider wheel is definitely gonna make for a better, more stable ride. So one thing I think we will see is completely different colors across the manufacturers. So this is very Ford, isn't it? This is, uh, is it Munda Silver? I think I remember having a focus in this color many years ago. But I think we'll see the usual VW colors in the T7. So I think you'll see your Ascot grays like that one there, probably pure gray, your, um, your, st your standard, your metallic blacks and stuff you'll see in these, but then there'll be more bespoke kind of unique 
uh, VW colours, copper bronze and things like that, bay leaf green, it'd be nice to see them in this platform. And I think you most probably will do, and it will really change the look of the vehicle. Ford will have their own um, unique colours, I'm sure. The Ford have got a really uh, bright kind of orangey uh, Ranger that looks very much to VW's chrome yellow, uh, which looks stunning. Uh, so I think they'll be, they'll, they'll be quite different. The other thing and the kind of the elephant in the room and the, the thing that comes up the most when you see the hate on these, and I understand there's going to be lots of hate, the VW purists just not going to be able to get their head around the fact that Ford and VW have collaborated on this and it's mostly Ford. I was a bit uncomfortable with it to start with, but the more I've got used to this, the more I've driven it and the more I've looked into it, I actually only think it's a good thing. I'm going to say that as people said, you're going to say it's a good thing because it's your business and your bread and butter, which is true, but I genuinely am impressed with the way this, this drives. I said the elephant in the room with this thing is going to be the engine. So as we know at the minute, and it comes up every time you men mention Transit Custom, people talk about the wet belt issue. And now it would be wrong of me not to bring up that wet belt issue. I actually knew nothing about the wet belt issue because I've never owned a Transit Custom. Them. So I grilled the Ford guys about it and I said, explain it to me. And it's to do with the, the cam belt system in it. It is a wet belt and it sits in oil. Um, and if so Ford's tell me that it's a problem if the vehicles are not maintained properly. So if you're not servicing your vehicle, when they say it is, they say that's the only time that they have the problem with it. I think it's one of those things that happens. It's very commonly spoken about. So people think they all do it, but they don't. But yes, it, it's apparent that if the vehicles aren't maintained when they should be, as we all should do, that they potentially can have an issue with this wet belt. Now, it looks like, having asked the garage around the corner that work on these a lot, that this is that engine. They still have that wet belt. You think it's most likely that the engines will be exactly the same, but as we've seen from the promotional video that VW released, you'll see um, when they scan across the containers at the back, they show there's going to be a TDI version. There's also going to be a full motion version now. They're also showing there's going to be an e-hybrid version, which could be an exciting one. So that's most likely to be a petrol electric combination. That's the one I'm quite interested in, where I think that they can massively improve that over the T7 multivan. Sorry, when I talk about T7, I meant the T7 multivan, is the range was really poor on the multivan. It would be nice to see like a two litre hybrid or, you know, a bigger like one eight hybrid, but with a better range than the T7 multivan. The T7 multivan was kind of 35, I mean, realistically 30, 25 miles. It would be nice to see a hybrid that kind of had the other side of 50, you know, 80 miles as combined petrol and electric. And then there's going to be an e-transporter. Now, I don't believe for one second VW would be foolish enough or Ford to bring out an e-transporter like the previous e-transporter, the ABT transporter that had a terrible range, really slow, uh, like maximum speed was pathetic and it just was an absolute flop. So I've got an ID Buzz. You drive an ID Buzz currently and I'm really impressed with the electric motor in that. Um, again, range could be better. And I think it's likely in these years of development that they've improved the range because battery technology is improving so much more. So the exciting ones could be the electric transport or the e-transporter and the hybrid. And time will tell if the TDI is the same engine as in this or whether there's any changes for the VW version. So that's it really. That's as much as I've got to tell you at this stage about the new Volkswagen Transporter T7 slash for Transit Custom. But keep watching. Anything new we find out, any more information we get, as soon as the new T7 is actually launched, no matter where it is in the world, we'll be over there filming it. You can guarantee it. We'll get you the first look you possibly can of the Volkswagen version of this. But can tell you is we're actually really impressed with it and we're excited by it. This thing had to change. It couldn't stay like that. It's not changed for so long. It needed to be updated. And yes, they've worked with Ford on it, but that's not terrible in everybody's eyes. People all get over it. They'll accept it. When the when the, T, when the T5 1.1 came out, people hated it because it wasn't a T5. When the T6 came out, everybody hated it, including me, because it wasn't a T5.1. When the T6.1 came out, everybody hated it. They hated the dog bone and they look. And now that's by far the most popular and loved look of all the transporters. Bar a preface Caravelle, that's still the very first best, best look you can get. The same will happen with this. People will hate it. They'll say it's a terrible decision, but in time they'll grow to love it. And I don't think VW are stupid enough to just throw a van out there that's just a completely rebranded original Transit Custom. I think VW are very clever and smart in their marketing and their knowledge, and they'll make sure the vehicle that comes off the production carrying that Volkswagen Transporter name will live up to the Volkswagen name. VW will make sure that the vehicle that rolls off that production line lives up to the Transporter name. Like this. There it is. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I said, we'll give you more updates as we have on this vehicle, the development of this, the, the process we're going through, through 3D scanning and designing things for it, ready in anticipation of the T7. Please do like that video, share it with anybody that might be interested in the new T7 or in the Transit Custom to help them get an opinion of it as well. Please do subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Ring that little bell to get notifications when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for watching.